We the Royals have become so painful to watch these days, but they are providing some lively chatter on Sports Talk Radio. Ned Yost has been getting hammered for the past 24 hours in this town. He deserves to come on at under fire after... Can I start this over again? I'm sorry. Okay. All right, the Royals have become painful to watch these days, but they are providing some lively chatter on Sports Talk Radio. Ned Yost has been getting hammered for the past 24 hours. He deserves to come under fire after that ninth inning debacle in the Atlanta game. A lot of folks piling on the manager for not pitch hitting Elliot Johnson or Gerard Dyson, and I get that. There's also been a lot of criticism of Yost for batting Alcides Escobar, number two in the order. We've been chirping about that where Escobar hits in the lineup most of the season. My problem with Ned Yost, this manager never lives on the edge. He seldom takes a chance. He's so predictable in everything he does. It seems to be out of the Bobby Cox, do it this way, handbook. Sure, we all like to second guess the manager. That's part of the reason why this game is so intriguing. In that situation Tuesday night, I would have put Kane in to run for Moose, who was on third base, one out at the time with Dyson batting. Why not lay down a drag bunt or a suicide squeeze? Get the game tied so we can go on from there. Uh-uh, nope, Dyson swinging at air and getting nothing. You know what? I think most of us really do believe the Royals are a better team than anything we've had around here for the past decade or so. But it is a fact they're 35 and 39. As we approach the halfway mark, that's the identical record of a year ago this time. How can that be with the best pitching in the American League? How does Dayton Moore and Ned Yost expect to keep their jobs? Bigger question here, folks. Why should we continue to care? We are gluttons for punishment. Remember, 28 years and counting since this team has been in the playoffs. That's Jack Smack.